Hey, what's up, everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Lakers lost to the Phoenix Suns in Phoenix 130 104. Yeah, I said 130 104. Uh, that game was a throwaway game. If ever there was a throwaway game, it was absolutely really nothing to it. The game probably shouldn't have even been played. Both of those teams just should have agreed to forfeit and give the Suns the victory by default because that was pretty much a waste of time to be completely honest with you uh but nevertheless we did watch some laker basketball we're always thankful for that we had some long stretches without you know the sport so anytime we could see our guys we're happy but i wanted us to strategize completely differently in regards to this basketball game i felt that most of the players who should have been on the floor didn't play as much and the guys who should have been sitting down played too much that's kind of how i felt about this one um, so it left me irritated. But, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't about whether or not we could win or lose. I didn't think we really had a chance to beat this team. Um, you know, if Aiton played tonight, Chris Paul is playing a very high level. And they got other guys down there that are really playing well, too, because at the end of the day, they've been playing against some really good teams as of late. We're about the worst team that they've seen all week. You know, they've had to see the Pelicans three times in the last seven games, so... It really comes down to them just having a sigh of relief and getting a chance to play against a lesser squad who was even more so less <laughs> because they were depleted. Uh, and boy, were we depleted. Anthony Davis, Braun, uh, who else was missing? Austin Reeves, uh, Juan Scano Anderson. Uh, we had everybody missing tonight, and it wasn't much to uh, really root for because of it. The game got away from us really early. Our coach tend to lean on Patrick Beverly. And at times, we saw what it normally does. Score goes completely out of hand when he's on the floor, and you sit him down, and the score gets a little better. We put size on the floor near the third. I think it was somewhere in the third quarter we tried to get away from Patrick Beverly a little bit. I think it was in the middle of the third. Came in there with some other guys. Scored, you know, cut to, what was it, 14 or something like that. Coach immediately put Patrick back on the floor. Score balloon back up to 22. I mean, it was pretty much what needed to be seen in regards to the to the argument that we've been making here, that Patrick Beverly, though we like him a lot, needs to be used differently. And because he's being used this way, uh, he pretty much caters to a lot of what goes wrong down there. You know, and so our coach really let me down tonight as it pertains to how he strategized in a game where we knew we weren't looking to succeed in a victory, but we did want to see younger guys just get more opportunities uh, to, to make mistakes. You know, a guy like uh, Max Christie was out there. He was one for nine, a minus 17. Definitely wasn't his greatest game, you know. I did like seeing him get the minutes that he got, but wasn't his greatest. But even so, it's like I, I'm, I'm fine with that because at the end of the day, I want him to do that. If, if nothing else, just be out there to do that because this is a game where he can get away with it. You know what I mean? That was my thing. Dennis Schroeder came out there, got 30 points. Four assists. It was a great performance by Dennis Schroeder. I'm happy he, he played well. I'm sure his representation is happy he played well. Uh, you know what I mean? The fans, we can root for that and see if one of our Lakers go off. That's dope, right? But here's the deeper way of looking at what we saw tonight. And, and please forgive me how this is going to sound, but this is because of how it's structured. We featured a guy who's only going to make 1.8 million bucks this expiring contract right now. Now, what does that mean? That means that in featuring him, you understand that because he makes what he makes, he only takes up so much of your cap. And in the way that things work in this NBA, because of the type of contract that he has, in order to trade it, you got to trade it for stuff that's either going to be much more expensive as to which it'll be attached to other things or you got to trade it to draft capital as to which Dennis Schroeder's not going to get you any draft capitals no one's going to give you any second round picks for his expiring contract no one's going to give you any first round picks for his expiring contract so essentially what I'm saying to you is if you break it down by the numbers the Lakers featured somebody that had no business featuring because they can't trade him at a higher price in in, in terms of how you structure a trade structure a trade you're not going to get anything for making him better. It's not like you're running um, someone like uh, Bogdanovich, for example. We saw the Detroit Pistons 
play Bogdanovich a million minutes. Or yesterday, for example, we saw them play Kyle Kuzma and Washington did, and, and Bradley Beal a million minutes. Those guys are structured in contracts and make up so much money to where if they trade it, they can get back a really good player or two or get back real draft capital or what have you. But when guys make only a small amount, you're essentially trying to trade them for that same amount. And when you get players that talented, guys who are as talented as Dennis Schroeder, you want to trade them for small amount players who are likely on rookie contracts. And who the heck is going to give you a rookie contract for Dennis Schroeder? You know what I'm saying? Nobody's going to trade you uh, Jalen Green for Dennis Schroeder. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or someone on a rookie contract who can get you 30 points. Hell no, nah, they're not going to trade you that for Dennis Schroeder. Even if he goes for 40 tonight, it's not going to happen because he doesn't have the upside to make that make sense. So essentially, you featuring him on a night like tonight does nothing for you. It does something for him and his representation because they can feature him next year and say, see what he did against the Phoenix Suns when nobody was out there? He can get 30 points. We just get them a favor. And here we go again with this politic ball. And it's like, as a fan, I know I'm not supposed to see these angles. I'm not supposed to be savvy to all this. This is not how I'm supposed to be looking at it. But unfortunately, when it comes down to it, I want to win. So you have to look at these things in order to figure out why you're not winning. And so this is where it brings you. It brings you to places where you realize, oh, crap, we just did this so that we can do a favor to Clutch, man. That's all this was. We featured one of their players that, that's about to be expiring so we can get him on a contract somewhere somewhere else. This does nothing for the Lakers at all. If for nothing but give them a handshake deal to say, okay, we're scratching your back so we can keep this, car- this, this partnership going. That's all I see there. That's all I saw. That's what the Suns game was. And when you see that and you're like, yo, but what does that do for these young players that we got that we're trying to make better? Nothing. You know, I saw Scottie Pippen do some good things in the fourth quarter, but I had to wait to the fourth quarter to see it. Because we're too busy running the clutch guys. Because we're trying to feature Dennis Schroeder so he can get a big contract with the Orlando Magic or something. It's like, come on, man. Y'all want us to be passionate about these games, NBA, but your teams are being structured and run this way, NBA. And I'm sorry, but it's just eating away at our care. It eats away at your give a damn. Because you sit there and you're like, man, I remember a time when I actually believed in what I was watching. Now it's just like, man, what's the script going to say next? Who are they scripting out? Who, who's who's going to win the next six championships because they draft Web Banyama? Like, at, th- at this point, that's what it's about now. Because you can clearly see in the details, this ain't even real. They're not even really serious about the detail of basketball. They sit in five and six superstars a night. <laughs> These dudes could play. You know they can play. There's only two of them that's actually injured. They're just sitting. And so I'm just like, man, this was not a basketball game. Just like I said about those San Antonio games when we're watching Keldon Johnson hoist up three-point shots basically with his left hand just to assure his team lost purposefully. That's You can't strategize. You can't, you can't teach anybody the sport of basketball watching that bullcrap film. You can't. Let's just be real. There's nothing to learn there. It's everything you do wrong. If anything, you can just say, this is what happens, young people, when people put money over the art and the sport. This is what you get. You get nonsense. So this is what you don't do when you take over the world, when you guys grow up to see how the world should be run. Don't do things like these people are doing it in 2022. And you have a better product. Probably make more money, too. That's what there's to learn there, y'all. That's it. Ain't nothing else to see. You know, I watched... The Phoenix Suns run half of their team and their players had a plus 22, plus 28. Guys like Torrey Craig hit a couple threes and it was a plus 24. Why is that? Because we didn't give them nothing to defend. We didn't give them nothing to defend. You know, Chris Paul was out there running around for 30-something minutes. He looked great. His efficiency level was high. Got to give him his credit. Aiton hardly missed a shot. How could he not? You know what I'm saying? I mean, well, who's guarding him? We hardly played Thomas Bryant out there, even though he was balling, hitting three-point shots. We decided not to go with him. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Why did Coach didn't go with him? Who knows? And it's like maybe we're resting people because it's a, it's a rest game. But it's like those are the players we need to get better. And if it's a rest game, why the hell are you playing Dennis Schroeder and Patrick Beverly the most minutes? And then putting Patrick Beverly in the game when you know the team is get coming back when he's you set him down. And as I said, the game started coming closer. We started seeing some inclination of a fight in this team. And what does coach go and do before the end of the third quarter? Put him right back in the game. But not in a, in a rotation or a situation that would make sense. No, 
in the same rotation he was struggling in before. Right next to Dennis Schroeder, the very situation that ruins our, our games nine out of ten times is him putting Schroeder and Beverly on the floor together. Whether it be AD and Braun on the floor or not, this is what usually hurts our squad. And what does this coach continue to do? He continues to do that. And I'm just like, man, Darvin, I don't want to get to a point where I'm screaming, I don't want Darvin as my coach. Because it's too early to be trying to get rid of a rookie coach that's this good of a cachet. That's, just, that's not how you do things. That doesn't make any sense. But what I don't do well with is stuff that doesn't make any sense. And what I'm seeing him do out there doesn't make any sense. And here we go again with some dynamic within this Laker organization where I can look at somebody and say, I don't know if I can hold you accountable for your actions because there could be someone behind you telling you to do something that doesn't make any sense, that reflects poorly upon you. And that's here we go again. I said the same about our our GM, Rob Palenka, because I don't know if it's his fault or this stupid stuff that I see him do. And I'm looking at Darvin Ham and I'm saying the same thing. I'm saying, Darvin, you're playing players that don't help you win. I don't know why you're doing it. It doesn't help us. And I think it's probably some people behind you telling you to do it. And I think those are the same people probably telling Rob Palenka to do stuff he shouldn't do too. And that's why I'm here saying I just want Jeannie Bus to stop listening to the people she's listening to because chances are they're the same people telling these people to do stuff that doesn't reflect positively upon them. That's what I'm seeing here. A, a, a franchise that is strategizing backwards. Absolutely backwards. And they uh, got young players who really, really could have brought at least some fight to this game because you saw that in the small spurts when we played them. But ultimately, we just decided not to for an opportunity to play older guys who could not win, who were only on the floor, who were only on the team to help us win in a situation where we're deliberately trying to basically lose because that's what you do when you remove that much of the team from the game. So your focus and what your aim was, was discombobulated, Lakers, because you didn't know what you should have wanted in the situation tonight. You should have wanted Max Christie and Scottie Pippen to get the most minutes this evening because you had no chance of winning and you need those players to get the most run with the unit that you have if you're going to call them up like you've been trying to call them up. You played them the least amount of minutes, and you let guys who have helped you struggle all season long get the most minutes in a game where you would probably needed them to just not be on the team at all for this game. That's what it was. They just needed to not be there so that other guys could do more of what it is that they don't get to do often, which would have made you more competitive anyway. This is just like, you know, you, you just understand how teams go wrong and you see what, what excellence really is when other teams do things correctly. When you see excellence, you praise it because you look at stuff like this and you're like, see, this is average. This is why excellence deserves so much attention because when you see average, it's, it gives you these results. There's nothing special going on in L.A. right now. These people are doing things the wrong way. They don't know how to strategize properly. When, when it's time to lose, they don't know how to structure themselves to look competent in doing so. In fact, they don't seem like they even understand the concept of such. It's like when we lose, we're supposed to suck. No, when you lose, you're supposed to be strategizing plays for players who need to get better. If there's a science to that. There are ways to strategize properly to get better when you have no chance of winning so that you're not the Clippers, right? Like these things, these things actually exist. And it's like the Lakers don't even know these concepts because they're too busy trying to do whatever else they're doing. Whatever else they're doing, that gives them no results in winning. No results. It's like I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here and I understand this so clearly, but it's like the people who are in charge of all this, who make all the money, they like clueless. Just completely clueless. What is Dennis Schroeder running around for 25 minutes in this game doing for you? What is Patrick Beverly running around for 25 minutes in this game next to him doing for you when the other team has Tory Craig, Mikael Bridges, DeAndre Ayton, Chris freaking Paul? <laughs> like, those are the players you're running up against these guys. Like, what in the hell do you think is going to happen there but them getting destroyed and, and, and basically just mopped off the floor for me if I'm going to have somebody get mopped off the floor it's going to be the youngsters who are going to be able to take that information and take that level and get better from it 
Not dudes who didn't already gotten beat by these same dudes for the last 10 years. Dennis Schroeder been getting his butt kicked by Chris Paul for 10 years. Patrick Beverly been getting destroyed for Chris Paul for 10 years. What the hell do I need to see that tonight? What did that do for anybody tonight, Los Angeles? That's all I'm saying, man. There's a, there's a certain way to do things so that you can always, always get the most out of your team, especially when you don't have anything at all. I could see if we had eight and nine picks to our name like the Knicks, we can do stuff like this. It wouldn't matter. But we don't have any picks, so we got to be looking to get better. We got to be looking to get something out of nothing, and we certainly can't be looking to feature people that can't help us get nothing. If you can parlay Dennis Schroeder into a first-round pick because of his 30-point performance, I'll shut up and sit back and chill. But if he's still on this team by the end of this deadline and ends up walking off this team for nothing or we resign him at the same little $1 million, I'm going to look back at this Suns game and help and, and remind you all of what it is that we missed here, what, what the opportunity actually was here. An inevitable loss that ended up becoming a loss nevertheless, and we were playing players that we needed to help us win. Without the core on the floor. Absolute stupidity, y'all. I don't know what else to put it. It's just people don't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know what the hell they're doing. The concept of developing young players and taking an opportunity to have young, fresh legs go up against old Chris Paul and how that could have made things more difficult for him over the course of a 48 game 48 minute game just lost him they'd rather go throw somebody at him who's on his level like Patrick Beverly who has the same amount of length and, 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 and years on his legs as he got you're making life easy on Chris Paul you're like oh shoot I got a guy that's tired as I am down here damn let's let's go to work instead of having somebody like Max Christie or Chris Paul hound him all night did you see how Scotty Pippen was hounding uh the man Landry Shamit down the stretch of that game. Full court. Hounding him, making life very hard on him, forcing him to turn the ball over. That should have been how we ran that game all night long. When you look look at where Scotty's at with his conditioning. Homie's put real muscle on his legs. He's ready for 40 minutes if you need him to run that. He's 19, 20 years old, yo. These are the type of things I'm looking at and I'm like, yo, are we stupid? We're asking Patrick Beverly to do things that Scotty can physically do. This is the same thing I say all the time. It's like, yo, people don't know what the heck they're doing, man. They don't know what to want. They don't know how to get the things that can help them win. The angles that Scotty Pippen takes when he's taking on full court pressure is going to force turnovers a lot of the time. Now, he's going to find himself in situations where he's taking chances. And he's going to have to funnel people into situations where ultimately they're going to break down the defense. So he needs to be very careful with some of the chances he's taking. Him and Max Christie, both of them find themselves behind people. And you got to be able to stay in front of your defender at all times. But the, some of the angles that they take in hounding folks, they're going to force turnovers. And I'm telling you right now, the better Scotty gets at this, the better and effective he's going to be of a, of a steals player. I already see where this is going. His defense needs to be taken very, very seriously. He's almost like Alvarado. And so this is one of those situations where it's like I, I don't I don't take Scottie Pippen lightly at all. When I see him running around out there and I see the numbers he's putting up in the G League and I see what his conditioning is and I look who his father is, I know. You see the, the, the chase down blocks back to back. You already know. So don't play around. You have a real player in Scottie Pippen who can easily balloon very fast for you into something really, really good. It's evident to me that he can take on loads, like actual 20 and 30 minute game he could play that we just need to get his basketball iq up to that but genetically and physically he's already there i watch a lot of athletes i'm telling you he's there we just need to get him into a space where he can become confident cut down on him turnovers start learning what it is that we need him to do and by the if we keep him with this team and play him like we're supposed to by the time ad gets back he can be one of our main point guards getting ad the ball and he'll be somebody who can both do defensive things that we need Patrick Beverly to do, offensive things that we need Schroeder to do, and be big enough to guard the people that both of them cannot. That's the vision. And if people are thinking clearly, they will use these next 15 to 16 games to make sure that Scottie Pippen and Max Christie are regular rotation players. 
That should be what we are focused on. All this Dennis Schroeder, Patrick Beverly stuff, I swear to you, if I had any control over this team, I would trade both of those players just to get them off the squad. I promise you I would. They would be gone. Be no more playing either one of them. I don't want to see small ball no more. And if we're going to be small, let them be as short as Scotty and no shorter than that. Period. No more. We got to disarm this coach from continuing to hurt our team with his belief in these two guys. I believe in him too. You guys know that. I haven't lost my belief in Patrick Beverly. I can think of certain teams. If I were running those teams, I want to take Patrick Beverly from the Lakers and put him on those teams right now. So don't get it twisted. It's just in how you use these players. If you don't use them right, with the combination of players that we also have on this team, you have a piece that just does not fit. And that's what we have in him and Dennis Schroeder. It's pointless running them dudes down there when we got the issues we got. This is ridiculous, and it's fixable. And I'm telling you exactly how to do it. You start playing Max Christie more. I don't care he went one for nine. I do not care. He went two for three last night. He's going to go in and out. He's a young player. Play him. Play him. Play Minion Gabriel. Play Thomas Bryant. Keep on putting Damian Jones in positions to do the things that Damian does because he was pretty effective tonight. And we know he's limited. But he's highly effective at the things that he's good at. And that is what I'm coming to understand. So if you if you make if you keep it simple and you give him repeated stuff to do that he's good at, he's gonna be effective. Blah 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 all day long. Above the rim with him. And on the other side, let him be the weak side guy. He's blocking everything. You saw he was swatting stuff earlier in this game. Let him do what he does best, and he'll help your team. And as he continues to do that, he'll have more confidence to do other things. But as long as he's out there not doing stuff that he's good at and continue to expose his weakness, his confidence is going to be low. He ain't going to help you. But as long as, you know, keep, keep guys doing what they're good at. That's all I'm saying. So that's this, this is what we saw tonight. There's a bunch of opportunities that we slipped out the way because we were trying to showcase players that basically had no business being showcased. That's the truth. But in the glimpses that we saw guys who were able to do other things, when they were able to get those opportunities, we saw good things. And so that's what I was ultimately happy about. Scotty Pippen was who I came to see, and ultimately I didn't see enough of him, um, truth be told. That's, that's, the, that's the truth as a fan, and I, want, I don't know if other fans feel this way because I look at the game a certain way. But that's all I really wanted to see tonight. I, I was excited about when you Gabriel coming back as well, and I was happy with what he gave me. Even though he's a couple steps slow, that's understandable. He missed seven games. He still was ex excellent out there, and I think as he continued to play throughout the game, we saw him get his rhythm back. So he'll be good to go going forward, and that's super exciting for our team. Uh, so, yeah, I think we'll be better going forward once we get some guys back. Obviously, we ain't going to be missing this many players too often. I'm pretty sure uh, Austin Reeves ain't going to want to miss another game. I already see where that's going. He's he's not going to want to miss games at all. Uh, so we'll have him back pretty soon, I'd imagine. Anthony Davis, is a lot of uncertainty going on with his injury. It's a lot of hush-hush. I got a bad feeling he's out for the season. So I'm preparing all of us for that right there. And if they tell you something better, great. But just prepare for the worst. I'm telling you, because these people are acting too hush-hush about this injury. The injury is too funky looking. And I, I'm, I'm worried they don't know what the hell's wrong with him. And I'm worried it ain't what they say it is either. They don't really know what's wrong. And they think it might have got hurt on that play. I think it might have been something else. So who knows? But at this point, the way they're acting is probably more than a month missed. So keep your eyes open for that. We we will always expect the worst here because that's how we <laughs> that's just how we have to be with this team, man. Because that's the only way you can truly prepare yourself for what it is that they're gonna spring on you. Because that's how they operate. We know that. So at the end of the day, we just gotta prepare for whatever. If they're gonna trade these two picks to get better, um, I, I wouldn't do it if AD's out for the season. Put it like that. I would I would keep those picks and try to move forward and, and what I need to do to make sure that uh, everything lines up properly to, to, to make a good decision at the end of the season. But I wouldn't do nothing with my assets if this guy's out because you're not a win-now team and you're not going to make a trade with those picks to make you better than you need to be. You're not. That's it. So as, as far as I'm concerned, we just got to run with what we got out there. And what we got out there has to be utilized more properly. And, of course, it's the Kobe hour, so we want to salute Kobe, Kobe Minute. You know how we do it, but uh, man, I, I just thought the Phoenix Suns really got a free pass tonight, a real free pass. I thought we could have put fresh dudes on them all night. We could have made things very difficult for guys shooting behind the arc. They shot a lot of threes, shot the ball very well tonight. And uh, yeah, as I said, that dude, uh, uh, Damian Jones, he shot, what was it, five for ten from behind the arc? Figured he would have a, a big game. 
Didn't score as much as I thought, but he hit a bunch of threes as we know. Torrey Craig hit all his three-point shots. He was major tonight. Um, and as I said, Bridges and Paul were efficient. They did their part. And, of course, Aiden didn't hardly miss anything. So when you have that much size coming at you and they're subbing in guys like Wayne Wright and, of course, you know, Landry Shaman can also stretch the floor. And, you know, it, it just became a situation where you're like, you understand this small ball crap is directly correlating to why we have absolutely no chance in competing against this team that's obviously much better than us. So with that being said, Darvin Ham has to has to take the blame for ultimately the the poor strategy. I, obviously, the loss was inevitable, no matter what we did. But you you don't send your guys out there to just run around and do nothing. You know what I mean? That's essentially what I saw out there. You guys needed more minutes. Young guys needed more minutes, and I don't want to hear nothing about all oh, their bodies can't take and they gonna get injured because you sent old guys out there, and we know damn well their bodies can't take and they for sure getting injured. So this, there's no excuse for any of this, including him being a rookie coach. There's no excuse for any of this. It's stuff, just it's politic ball, man. It's compromised, and I stand by that. So that's pretty much what I have to say about this game. Burn the tape, you know what I mean? Forget it even happened. Hopefully we'll have a better game against the Beam team. Hopefully guys will return and be able to play a little bit. But uh, I think LeBron James needs to be looking at this franchise and asking what the hell are they doing. Where are we? Where are we? What are we doing? Because at this point, people don't even want to strategize properly to get better. They're just looking around at each other. And and, and for me, when I, when the mind that I got, there's solutions here. There are things we can do. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not of the mindset you just sit down and do nothing with a basketball club. Hell no. There's always some players who call up from the G League to give some minutes that you, or some guys that are not playing well to cut. It's never, it's never nothing to do. So right now, people are doing nothing. And if I'm the king, I'm looking at y'all. I'm saying, what are we doing? So I think that's what he needs to do. He needs to go into somebody's office and start asking, what are we doing? Are you going to trade this, this, this guy, Anthony, to get some picks here so we can have a future? Are we keeping Anthony? If so, what are we doing with Russell? You know what I'm saying? If we're going to keep all these people, can we at least get rid of these two little guys so we, our team can make more sense? That don't require you getting rid of them two picks to get rid of, 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 of Schroeder and, and and them little guys so we can have some size down there. You know what I'm saying? Those are the type of questions that need to be asked. Ain't nobody coming here telling you to f- trade away everything. You ain't got to trade the two picks for, for stuff you don't want to trade. But do complete this damn roster. Do not have us running around on this next road trip without having made some type of trade to improve this damn thing. Because what we saw tonight, it didn't make no sense, man. You can trade Dennis Schroeder for whatever the equivalent is that's taller. And that needs to be done right now. Video 44. I think you're off watching. I'm out.